Uh, today we don't have a parable our Lord speaks, but we have an event, you know, and this event really demonstrates our, you know, why our Lord came, which is not to condemn us, of course, but to save us. And we know He's our Savior. You know, and you see, because uh, in His arguments with the scribes and Pharisees, in which you really see the humility of Jesus, because they're very resistant to His, uh, to accept and believe in Him. Our Lord often gets mad at them, and is holy, a holy type of anger, you could say, or, or be, or because he, uh, he loves them very much, and He wants to save them, and He knows they're right, literally hell-bent if they don't change their heart and believe in Him. You know, and, and in their arguments with Him, He often says, you know, I did not come to condemn you. I will not condemn you. you, but you they put your trust in Moses. He said, the law will condemn you. It will be Moses who condemns you because of the law, which points to the fact that none of us are saved apart from Christ and His mercy. When the universal need for that. So in this, with this woman caught in adultery then by the Pharisees and scribes, you know, he makes a very important point that he did not come to condemn, uh, uh, but to save. You know, and, and, uh, and underneath this is one of the first things is, you know, for us is that the Lord, the Lord doesn't expect the impossible from us. He just asks us to repent. He said, from now on, sin no more. So when we go to confession, you know, we go to confession, we, as we make, try to make, we make act of contrition, and part of that is, I intend not to sin again. And we always intend not to commit those sins again. You know, and it doesn't mean that we're never going to commit those sins again. As a matter of fact, we all of us, we're trying, we have our dominant weaknesses, and, and uh, we know it's a battle to do better. But we have that firm intention. And the whole idea of, of this holy penance is really great, that our Lord uh, he doesn't ask the impossible. He just asks us to hate the sin and to have that holy conversion away from sin towards Him. You know, it doesn't mean we have to go on. He doesn't ask us impossible penances and so on. You know, and, and this is a, a beautiful disposition that we need to have. You know, sometimes, a lot of times you could be older, you know, and all of a sudden you look back in your life and, and the soul can then be filled with some deep regrets and even, you know, be tempted towards a sadness. So I did this and this wrong and everything. Well, in this context, we got to see Jesus, He doesn't want us to have a worldly sadness. All that stuff should be transformed into faith in His goodness. And the soul should be then delighting in the mercy it's received from God and, and have a more perfect type of contrition which is sorrow for hurting our Lord. Now that's holy and that's not discouraging because it's accompanied by great knowledge of how much He loves us and by His passion bringing light to our souls. So in this sense, the soul has to have to have a holy gratitude, not a worldly sadness because all that worldly sadness would come from depending on its own self-righteousness or you could say fictitious self-righteousness because we are not righteous of ourselves. We're all cleansed by the blood of Christ. And then in that context, then, the soul wants to go full speed ahead, you know. And, and it's very important on that. Otherwise, the soul just gets paralyzed because there's a defect in that. It, it, it hasn't really gone there and put its whole trust in Jesus, understanding that it's only by Him that we're saved and by His blood, you know, and, and to go with that all the way and everything. You can take it like take the country as a whole and everything. So you can see what, what you can apply it very easily. When this country becomes holy again and once again becomes one nation under God, we're not one nation under God right now, right? No way. There's a, maybe a third of the nation strongly believes in God, maybe more, hopefully. Maybe a third of the nation doesn't, or they make up their own notion of God. And, and, that, and, and, and then maybe a bunch of third nations doesn't know what. <laughs> but, but when we become holy again, nation God, there's going to be a full type of conversion, right? And it's going to be the type that the soul then turns away from the evil to the good and, and, and will, you know, will hate the sin and, and, 
and, and is not going to be paralyzed by discouragement, but is going to go full speed ahead. You know, so at the heart of this country, of course, the problems is a country really, when the legalized abortion is not the only sin in the world, but when the country legalized abortion, it legalized murder of the innocent. At that point, then, the country's no longer a nation under God. And then late, for, shortly after that, then you could say, you could words, you could like a canon law, you put in the law as canon law. But we, we, we canonize, in a way, perverse morality, homosexual marriage, and all the other stuff's going with it. And that's why now there's going to be a deep, deep uh, conversion that's going to be very, very difficult. Because it's all canonized in law. I mean, it's not even like in, in Russia, where Russia doesn't have, it's not canonized in law like that in Russia. You know, so we got a long way, much further way to go for a conversion than they do. Plus, when we, have, when we convert, we have this deep conversion, what's going to happen. It's going to be like everybody's going to see, for example, what an abomination it is to take human life. You know, and, and people are lied with that position, voting to take innocent human life, and all the other sins. In a, in a, in a more general sense, you could say, and there could be a lot of ignorance on these things, but the country will understand, like when, the, when this country really started going downhill, when uh, contraception became accepted in the vote. Because once that happened, the country uh, then is having this deep type of selfishness, you know, in which the capital sin of lust is given a free reign, and the, the generosity of mom and dad raising a family, having children, goes out the window. You know, you could even say the entitlement, you could say drain the swamp, the entitlement of the swamp is, 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 is resting on the substrate of contraception and the contraceptive mentality. It's, just not this, it's very different than the generosity in which our country is founded on. But when our country has this conversion again, and then, then there's going to be, uh, be this forgiveness of uh, this reception of God's mercy, and there'll be a holy hatred of these sins. You know, it won't be a condemning other people at all. There will be no condemnation of souls. But it's going to be this type of complete change of heart where, this, where the souls, where the country understands it's wrong and has this full type of penance receiving Jesus' word and saying, and, as Jesus says, and sin no more. And we understand the, the damage done and they have this holy hatred of sin. It's very important. You know, and one of the best examples in all of us priests, uh, we, we, we all have experience of this, is, is uh, you know, who's your greatest pro-lifers today? It's all over the camp. We've got great pro-lifers. But many of them are the ones who are either involved in the abortion industry or had abortions themselves. Because they have the same type of experience that Jesus gives of being converted. And they hate to sin, and they go completely forward believing in God's goodness. And that's pretty awesome, right? But that has to apply for all of us in whatever, every, whatever area we're in and everything. I mean, there's going to be a multitude of older Catholics, you know, who have to say, yeah, we really understand the, the sins in the past, and, and we're not, none of us are innocent and stuff, and, and have a, really a hatred of that, and going forward with the whole mercy, receiving God's mercy and giving it to others. You can really illustrate that by the dispositions of our Lord Jesus today in this event, and the Pharisees and scribes who are there. The Pharisees and scribes got this woman, and she's being used. She's being used to try to get at Jesus to see how he's going to handle this sin. That's it. She's being used. And what about Jesus? He came to save. He's not using anyone. And as a matter of fact, he's going to make himself a gift. And, and so uh, he convicts the heart of these men by writing in the ground. <laughs> the popular theory is it could be some sins that they had committed <laughs> and the elders they walk away going with the elders a little bit of self-knowledge you know and, and then he says neither do I condemn you just sin no more and then at that point you know and then our Lord goes on besides all the teaching and stuff of course we know that he, he's the victim the God man the Lamb of God who is sacrificed on a cross by his blood we are saved no redemption outside of Jesus Christ and he gives all the graces 
So he, he forgives the sin because he has a power to as God, and he sheds his blood to satisfy divine justice. And so you got the ultimate gift. And we, and we can just see what's going on in mankind right now in our times. you get this notion of the giver and the taker. And, and, and this is where the, you say, like pro-life's not the only issue, but it's such an essential issue because it, sp it spills into everything else. And all of that is using. And the flip side of it, and, and be, to be authentically pro-life, and it's more than just, more than just at before birth, it, 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 it's, it's a continual disposition of giving. And the other person is made in image likeness of God. And that's what you and I have to do. You know? and, 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 and the way back, obviously, is going to be we're forgiven by Jesus, and we then um, are part of his mystical body. And then we also want to make everything a sacrifice. How do we become givers all the time? Well, it's, it's, you can sum it up in one line. Do the will of God. Do the will of God. That's what love is. And how you can do that? Well, you do it perfectly. You make a holocaust of yourself. You look at what God is asking for every moment of the day and everything. You keep your prayer life strong and everything. And then you're making an offering of everything all the time. Every thought, word, and deed, everything you're doing. You're not living for yourself. You're living for God and, for your, and, and then for His, His, His children. You know, that's it. And that's what, we, that's what we have to do. And it's really fascinating what's going on now and all this, you, I, 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 you can call it whatever you want, communist takedown, whatever you want to call it. What you're seeing is, is the whole Western society, the whole Western abortive contraceptive society and everything that this great reset and globalism comes with. And they, got, that's, and they, got, they give their code of morality and you can see, you know, and, and you can see it's all tied to that taking. Like the taking of human life to be a user, it's all tied to that. And all these loss of freedoms, all this control, all, all these different ways and we're supposed to like live a lie out there and everything and, and go against what our great country is founded on as a nation under God. We've seen all of these things. It better be giving God permits it, and He's giving man an opportunity to understand and what's really fundamental underneath that. Underneath that is the failure to see a, a person as a child of God, where every life is sacred. You know, and it starts in North like abortion and euthanasia, euthanasia at the other end, but everything else that's coming out of it. And all the offense of immorality towards human sexuality, it's all tied to the same thing as using. And so people have a chance to wake up and get to think, how does it, be, how does it feel to be used? How does it feel to have your rights stripped away? I tell you how it feels. It feels really lousy to make a hospital visit right now. It feels really lousy. It's like the hospitals have changed so much, not because of people working there, because the way the whole medical system has been completely flipped on its head. You know, the old, and it's just one little tiny way. It'd be me, I've been going to hospital visits the whole life and everything, and, and, and I mean, as a priest, and, and they're usually very joyous places in a way. There's a lot of volunteers, there's a lot of sacrifice, good people working, they're trying to do a good thing. It's, there's a type, you got the, the sickness and the suffering, but, but then you have the type of goodness underneath it, right? Not anymore. The whole thing's being flipped. But that's just one little tiny thing, you know? But there's, it's all other ways, there's, there's so many other ways, you know, and, 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 and people are feeling it, you know? Like when you, you feel it in different ways, like <laughs> every time you go to the gas station <laughs> and all these things, you're paying, you're paying for stuff and, and everything. You're, you're feeling it. But people have to, and, but you see, I, I see, you know, God permits people to feel it because somehow, Somehow, the soul, like the prodigal son, has to wake up and, and go right back to the very beginning and understand that human life is sacred and giving as opposed to using and, and actually have this type of penance that the woman has here. She doesn't want to commit that sin anymore. The United States as a whole right now, we're a long way from having that penance.
as a whole. There are great souls, but we're a long way as a whole, you know. And, and but, we, but, but how's it going to start uh, with you guys? <laughs> and, and never let your joy go away from you. I mean, you've got to have your joy, you know. And, and one thing, you, as well, like all the kids growing up, is, is almost one thing you could say is, if when you're doing the will of God and you're making a sacrifice everything, you can always have a type of spiritual joy. You know, and, and even in the midst of suffering, because you're in union with Jesus and you're experiencing His love. Because when you're doing His will and making everything a sacrifice, you can only do that because He loved you first and you know it and you know you're good. Because you're good and cleansed by His blood, you have something to give, and you're not afraid to give. In the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen.